Between the last movie and this one, I've gone ahead and refined the frog actions. I've animated the bones a little bit. And we can continue to refine this, but I wanted to go ahead and show how and when we start inserting those vehicle animations we created. And then bring the extra drama of those to our scene, as well as tying those in with the camera movement. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we've got going on here. I'll come back to keyframe zero and advance to one frame. So for the first eight seconds or so, we've got our frog looking, twitching a little bit, kind of looking around, um, deciding what he wants to do, stretching the legs, and uh, deciding whether he wants to cross the highway. At this point in time, between 10 and 12 seconds, the car rate of speed is simply going to pick up and get greater and greater to the point where it's going to become difficult to see the frog. However, simultaneously, we'll also be doing a camera pullback at that point in time to emphasize the fact that there's, there's more here than just a few inches in front of the frog that need to be dealt with. So let's go ahead and take our timeline back to actually the very beginning. We have three different car animations, and we have three different uh, truck animations that we'll bring in and use here. We're going to insert them all at keyframe zero, so they'll be in the scene. However, we're not going to use the actions that come with those until we get further down the timeline at about something like frame, or I should say 10 seconds or so. So let's do that now. We'll come down to File Import, and I want to bring up the point again. If you create something that you want to use and have accessible to you all the time when you work with anime, you can save it to these directories that are right here in the Import menu, or in fact, you can create new directories for those. Where you find those, I'm going to come down to Anime Studio Object, pull this over here, but if you open up the actual program, inside the program folder, you'll find library. And in that library happens to be all these given directories that you can work with. So if you want to add new directories to that, this is the place to do it. And it works great if you want to have that kind of accessibility. Since we are working with the frog, we'll come back to the frog directory to insert my blue car. The insert object dialog shows us the blue car and this is the name of the layer. I've actually gone in and renamed all the layers for those vehicles. But we don't see anything in the preview window. And the reason for that is because this is zeroed in or focused on the center of the layer. Well, Remember when we were creating these we had the vehicles way over on the right side of the layer. That is why we don't see them. They're not in the center of the frame. So you just have to know what these are and where they are because you won't get a preview for those. So that's inserted. We see it to the side here a little bit. It shows up correctly. Let me go ahead and import real quickly our other objects. We've got our red car. I'll select OK. Then we'll go ahead and snag our yellow car. Now we could bring these in in layers if we had wanted to, or put them all in a group in the same animation. I chose to keep them unique and distinct and separate just for the reasons that on other points in this project we'll need to use them individually and I didn't want to have to import all those at the same time. Go ahead and snag our trucks right here. It's one of those things where you just have to decide how you're going to use it most and that becomes the way that you actually bring it in and start using it. We've got one vehicle that I've got queued up to, to start screaming across the screen all by itself we can change that if we want to in this animation. That's one of the trucks. So we'll always have one vehicle going in front of the, the character, the frog, as we work with it. There's truck two. And finally, we'll get to truck three. We'll see if the truck one animation is problematic for us. As we advance through the timeline right now, we're up close and we'll see the truck come through and it looks a little on the small side here. Let's go back to time frame zero and we see how large or small these are in relationship to the frog. This is one of the reasons I wanted them all on separate layers so that I could go ahead and scale those. I'll move our action palette out of the way because frankly they're just too small right now. 
So on the truck one layer, and this is going to be important as well, I need to make sure that each one of these is appearing on a valid Z depth. Right now, when I advance the timeline, we can see that the truck is actually between the grass and the frog, not ideal. We want it to be on the road in front of everything. This is where we'll come back to keyframe zero, and this is where the naming conventions for these uh, make a big difference. You'll notice also that uh, I happen to have the frog group open when I started importing these, and all these have imported into the frog group. Not happy about that, but fortunately it's very easy to fix, and I'll drag these outside of the frog group so we can go ahead and close that and make our list here just a little more manageable. looks like make sure we've got all those we sure do all right with all of our trucks out right now I'm going to come back and reference the Z depths on the layers that we've got right here I want the vehicles to be in front of everything so I'm actually going to move the blades of grass and I'm going to make our layers palette just a little bit larger so that we don't have to scroll as much while we do this we're kind of done dealing with colors so I'll grab the blades at z-depth 1.6 down, and I'll grab the roads at 0.3. And now I'm going to give each one of these a successive z-depth so that they always appear in front of the frog. But at certain points in animation, they are going to overlap. And because of that, they need their own z-depth so that they, the, the machine, the animation program, knows where to place them in space when we work with that. When we come back in our next movie, I'll have those sorted for you and we'll be ready to employ our actions.